In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to go from an image which you can take either with a camera or your phone, all the way to a material in Revit, which when rendered is going to look exactly like the real thing. So we're going to be taking an image ourselves and turning it into a Revit material. Let's go. Okay, so our first step is obviously going to be to take a photo. Now, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind when it comes to taking a photo. Obviously, having a better camera or a camera phone uh, of higher quality uh, is going to help, uh, but most importantly, you want to get the lighting right. Uh, having sharp shadows and very exaggerated shadows is going to be very bad for your materials, especially in this case where we're trying to actually create something called a PBR material. Now I'm going to be talking more in depth about these types of materials in a future video, but for now what you need to keep in mind is avoiding sharp shadows. So in this particular case I have picked out a day where it was kind of overcast, there were it was cloudy, and uh, when you look at shadows they are uh, very diffused and uh, very soft. So that's what you're looking for. And then you just go out, find a material in real life, you want to and stand perpendicularly to it and take the photos. Then once you have taken an image, it's actually very simple, you just transfer it to your computer and then we come to editing. Now editing is actually divided into three different stages. Stage one is very simple and that's just to crop the image and rotate it so it's kind of nice and perpendicular on screen and you want to eliminate everything that you don't need. Step two is going to be your basic color correction, contrast settings, and just fixing some imperfections that you see in a photo. So if there is something out of place, something that shouldn't be there, uh, you can just kind of uh, fix it a little bit and remove those, uh, those elements. And then we're coming to the most important step, and that's making the image tileable and seamless. Uh, now, why is this important? Well, I'm sure you have seen those Revit materials where it's kind of obvious that it's just one same image repeated uh, thousands of times. And then in other cases, you see a material that actually looks natural. Well, the reason for that is because uh, that photo that looks natural has actually been set up uh, perfectly to be seamless or tileable. That means that you don't have any kind of uh, very visible repeating elements, something that looks kind of out of place, uh, which is going to be just repeated kind of uh, in, a, in a tile. So something that I like to do for this is I like to set up first color correction and uh, contrast and just the brightness, uh, just to make sure that it's even on all sides of the image. Then I like to look at the image and I like to uh, make sure that there's basically not anything that's kind of the focal point of the image. You don't want to have a focus point of an image. So if you imagine if you had like a brick wall and there's just all of the bricks are same and then you have one brick that's for some reason bigger and perhaps dirty or something like that. Well, if you have something like that, it's going to be very noticeable once that image is tiled. So you want to make sure that the image doesn't have a focus point. It's just like a uh, like one of those uh, images where it's basically nothing. Nothing is kind of pulling your attention. Like wherever you look at the image, it's kind of the same. So this is what we're looking for. And then, uh, most importantly, and probably <laughs> the, the most difficult step is to make sure that the edges of the image align. Now, in some cases, this is going to be easy. In this case, where we have some stones, it's actually quite difficult and it takes a long time, uh, but I think the, the result was good. Uh, uh, what you wanna do basically is just kind of take some stones, move them around, uh, try to uh, basically kind of patch them over other stones, just in order to get that uh, proper effect, like there is no basically edge to the image. It can be repeated thousands of times and it doesn't look out of place anywhere. So that's the final step of our editing process.
After that, the next step is to generate all of the maps. So when it comes to materials in Revit, it's not just kind of the main image that, that's there. You also want to include all of these different maps that are necessary in order to give depth to the image, in order to tell it, okay, it should be perhaps reflective here and not reflective there, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So we do this with different types of maps. Now, in this case, we're creating a PBR material, and and as I said, I'm going to have a whole separate video on PBR materials in Revit. And once it's up, I'm going to include it up in the links above uh, or in the cards above and then also down in the description. Uh, now, speaking of these PBR materials, in this case, I've used the Materialize software. It's free software where it actually just helps you generate all of these uh, all of these maps as separate images. And then it's a really simple process of just loading these images inside of the uh, Revit material editor. Uh, you make sure that the sizes are correct. And then finally, you have your own material inside of Revit, which when rendered is actually going to look exactly like the like the real thing. Uh, now, this is actually a very long process. I think it took me over an hour just to uh, create this material. But once it's created, you can use it wherever you want. So I think it's really, really powerful. Now, if you want to learn like this entire process, I've actually outlined everything step by step, slowly explained every single edit, every single uh, change and every stage uh, inside of my Revit materials masterclass. So this is my latest course, which is available on my website, balkanarctic.com. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to include it just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. I think it's a fascinating process to just go from an actual image and then turn that into a Revit material. You can try it by yourself. Uh, and it does take uh, quite a bit of trial and error. So if you want to kind of skip that uh, trial and error, you can get the course or otherwise you can try it yourself. But I think it's it's really powerful to be able to generate some uh, materials on our own, especially if it's something that's perhaps already part of the building. We're doing a renovation project or something like that. And you want to keep some of the materials, but you want to also represent them inside of Revit. I think this is a very powerful process. Uh, so please tell me in the comment section below, is this something that you have done before or do you have perhaps certain needs to create certain types of materials? And yeah, tell me what's the first material that you're going to be making. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's a little bit different, more of a outline of a more complicated process than kind of a simple, slow, kind of small scale step-by-step -step tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, and I'll be back with another regular tutorial in, uh, in a couple of days. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.